Welcome back, guys. I'm Mac from MacTheMovieGuy.com, and I figured I would, uh, I'm gonna start, uh, start doing a review recap of this series. I've been a fan of it now for three seasons, and I wasn't doing my channel for the first three seasons, and now I've got a channel. And we'll see if there's any interest in this. So I'm gonna start off. I'm Mac from MacTheMovieGuy.com, and this is my recap slash review of Stranger Things Season 4, Episode 1, the Hellfire Club. Uh, for those who are new to my channel, I'm a blind film critic, so I didn't get to see all the gnarly things happening in this, which might have been a good thing. I don't know. Right there at the end, I was like, oof. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh. Uh, no, I, something I probably would have looked away. <laughs> I would have been like, oh. Uh, now I understand why there's a content warning. I didn't even realize this show was rated TV-14 until I heard like people being upset about it. Um, actually, I, I'd heard some... Uh, there were some rumblings in some of the pre-reviews, some of the, the people who actually are recognized as critics <laughs> and get the, uh, the screenings in advance, and they were talking about how they were surprised Stranger Things wasn't TVMA. And, uh, I, yeah, 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 if this was visually what it was described as, I'll give you that. It feels like a TVMA moment there at the end of this episode. Um, I won't tell you what it is, but I will tell you the last, uh, 10 seconds of this, of this episode are brutal. Um, just prepare your, prepare yourselves, uh, girdle, girdle your loins. Um, so as a fan of Stranger Things, how, what did I think about, uh, the Hellfire Club? Well, first of all, every time I hear the Hellfire Club as an X-Men fan, I'm only, I'm always going to always think of the Hellfire Club from X-Men. Um, that's immediately where my brain goes. So I was like, oh, they're, oh, oh, and they're just using the name. It's not an X-Men reference. It's so Dungeons and Dragons Club, and uh, okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> so they play a lot of D and D in this in this episode, um, and uh, our gang is split. Uh, I'm gonna try to avoid heavy spoilers, but uh, I gotta talk about something. So uh, the gang, we know the gang is split, right? That's how season three ended. Um, you know, Joyce took, uh, Will and Elle off to California. Everybody else got stuck. <laughs> stuck and left behind. Um, so they're still there. Uh, and they're just trying to go about their lives. Caleb's playing basketball now. Um, the other kids are playing, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Mike is getting ready. He's about to fly out to see Elle. Uh, and Dustin's girlfriend is still in Canada, I guess, because they talk over the phone. So they kept her around for, at least for the first episode, so she still exists. Um, a lot of the older, the teenage ones, the ones that were like the generation, not the generation, but a few years older, you know, the older brothers, sisters, they're, they're still in this. Um, everybody's back, basically. Um, there's a slew of new kids, um, that are featured. Uh, there's a new sort of basketball player that's super popular. He's the head of the basketball team that Caleb's on. He gets a decent amount of focus. Um, there's this D&D &D master, Ethan, who gets a ton of focus. Um, there's this cheerleader, Chrissy who's focused heavily, um, and, uh, there's kind of this, <laughs> kind of this bitchy girl out in California that's messing around with Elle, and, uh, I guess she gets some screen time, and then there's, like, a stoner friend of Jonathan's that's out there, too, who gets far less screen time, um, and I guess some adults, and it just peters out from there. But uh, it's hard to tell, like, who's going to make a huge impact out of the new characters on the series. As if I had to guess right now, uh, I would say, I would say Ethan probably is going to make the biggest impact. Um, I think his name is Ethan, not Eddie. Uh, man. Um, 
<laughs> that's how little impact he made on me is I can't remember his name. He's just this like really aggressively nerdy, uh, drug dealing Dungeons and Dragons player. Um, it kind of feels like exactly the kind of character that would do well <laughs> in, in, in a series like Stranger Things, you know? Um, he, I feel like he'd be an asset or an ally, but we'll see. We'll see where his character goes. Um, yeah, so our characters are split. We do get the film opens with a flashback showing us, um, a little bit more about the experiments that went on with the kids, you know, with Eleven and all of the other numbers. Um, a little bit of that. I don't want to, I'm not going to ruin that scene for you. So don't worry, I'm just going to tell you that's where that's where we're at. Um, I will say Hopper is not really in this. He's referenced. Um, there's a mystery, but uh, we are not immediately shown anything about Hopper in the first episode. Uh, this focuses a lot on setting up the mystery. Um, there's one particular character that seems to be afflicted. Uh, and uh, I think that's where our mystery is going to start out for the season and uh boy are they afflicted i don't know how they got afflicted i don't understand it i'm hoping we get more of an explanation as to why this person was chosen uh why we started with this person <laughs> um where what the hell's going on where is it coming from but damn um like i said last <laughs> last 10 seconds uh damn so that's all I got. That's my review. If I was on Rotten Tomatoes, it would just be a quote that says, damn. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, I mean, it, it definitely, like, you kind of feel like there are points of this where it just feels like kids being kids. And then there's other parts where you're like, okay, uh, nope, this is Stranger Things. <laughs> like, I totally forgot. I thought I was watching something on the CW. Um no, it, it reminds you uh, immediately that uh, <laughs> some shit's going down. So um, it's just what what is the shit that's going down? I don't know, because I'm only reviewing episode one right now. So this is my reaction. I have not seen the second episode. Did not move on into the next episode. <sighs> I thought this was a great way to kick off the season. Um, I, uh, it's longer than an hour, so make sure you block out that time. This is not the massive ungodly one that I've heard about, that there's one episode that's two and a half hours long. That's not an episode. I'm sorry. That's just not an episode. That's, that's a movie, uh, that's longer than a ton of movies I've watched recently. <laughs> like, you couldn't have cut that into two episodes? What about that episode? I want to know when I get to that episode because I can't wait to review it. <laughs> I want to know what about that episode was so pivotal that there could be no cuts to create two episodes out of that two hour and 30 minute episode. <laughs> what? In God's green earth. Anyway. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited by this episode. I don't mind things that are a little over an hour, but two and a half for one TV show episode has been much. Uh, that's, that's extreme. Because uh, that's without commercials. You know, when they say, like, Grey's Anatomy special two-hour season finale, they don't really mean it's two hours of Grey's Anatomy because there's commercials in there. So it ends up being, like, a little over an hour and a half, you know, or about an hour and a half worth of actual Grey's Anatomy time. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is just straight two and a half hours. So, uh, yeah, I feel like right now the... Uh, the unsung hero is going to be Max. Uh, I feel like they're setting up her character for one hell of a character arc. There's a hint of it in the first episode. She's given a lot of emotional weight. She's given like a whole bag full of emotional weight. Um, and uh, I can't wait to see where her character goes. I feel like if anybody gets an Emmy nomination this year, it might be Max. So... Um, yeah they're giving her they gave her everything so um it's it's the cast they're great they're back um there's a couple new characters and they get described um as far as the returning characters not so much if they've been in this the show before you don't really get an update as to what they look like so uh 
I wouldn't say, if you haven't seen Stranger Things, don't start with season four. I would say that anyway, even to my people who can see that are watching this channel, don't start with, just start at the beginning. I mean, the series, it builds on itself. First of all, you would have no idea about a lot of the stuff that they're referencing um, because it happened in previous seasons. This show is very linear in its storytelling. It's not something you can just pick up halfway through. So um, make sure you go back from the beginning and watch it. But I love it. I'm glad it's back. Um, this is pretty easy. It's one of my favorite TV shows. Um, I'm going to give Stranger Things Season 4, Episode 1, The Hellfire Club, an A. I uh, was really excited that it came back. Can't wait to watch more episodes. I know we're only getting one more season. It ends after Season 5. Uh, it was supposed to end in Season 4, but luckily Netflix, I don't know, they gave the Duffer Brothers some money and they begrudgingly agreed to one more season, so... Uh, we're lucky. Um, and uh, don't forget to throw me a like and a subscribe. I'm going to keep doing Stranger Things recaps unless nobody's watching them. And uh, we will see you in the next episode. You can check out more of my reviews at MacTheMovieGuy.com. And uh, you can check out the audio description project to see what else is audio described. If you don't want to watch Stranger Things, you can watch something else. That's totally cool, too. Maybe it's not your vibe, but yeah, that last 10 seconds, phew, oof, <laughs> just get ready for it. Um, all right, see you on the flip side.